Hey everybody, welcome back to Trek Yards. I'm Captain Foley. And my name is Quanah Cockings, welcome back to- Oh, we're doing a thing. Why are you so upbeat? I mean- People have died. It's my default, but yeah, this one's a Solace episode. Um, and with obviously full spoilers, you know, we, we knew somebody via the trailers was going to die because Seven was holding somebody. We guessed Jacote or, or, or uh, Hugh. You know, people that we maybe could have been, and we got the resolution in this episode. And the winner was. Dun, 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 dun. Each of. Or at least actor that's not actually Manu Entereme. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. And I totally missed that it was Each of the first time um, until about, until they re reset it later in the episode. I'm like, really? And then I watched it a second time, and it's like, yes, yeah, she says Each of at the beginning. I totally missed it the line of dialogue so yeah, I, I heard something sound like that and i had to put on subtitles because i couldn't actually understand them properly um I mean, it's a very very quick moment and sad oh, it's, I mean, it's sad that's a gut punch of a start i mean it, it's basically like um well <laughs> no i'm not gonna spoil but like the new terminator film or the old the, the newest one it's like they gut punch you in the first but i will say as motivation for the character seven of nine that is probably as strong as you can get motivation wise you know her her last her last um person she can relate to fullest fullestly from the delta quadrant um and and you know and and you can kind of you know all things that could justify her revengeiness her going rogue that's probably is the most you can go so i like the logical decision of that but obviously wow i didn't want to see him die the character's great you know what did you think Stuart, when you when you were watching it well i was like oh okay well somebody's getting tortured oh they're part borg that's fine okay cool um but whatever. I mean, I thought it was, I still thought the scene was a little, a little too gory. I mean, a lot of people had complained about it that it kind of made them sick or turned them off right away. Um, I, I was like, eh, it's fine. So I, I, I didn't really, it didn't really phase me too much. Uh, but then when you you know it's each have and you go back and rewatch it, it's like, oh man, that kind of sucks. And then it, sh it should have been a giveaway where she's scanning for the cortical node, and it's like, where's your cortical node, buddy? Um, well, he doesn't have one. He donated it to Seven of Nine. So again, a good canon reference that's kind of obscure. I mean, you can't just watch a few episodes of Voyager and know that happened. Um, that's, a, that's an interesting um, thing they put in there. So, But, but if, it, um, if it's your only line of dialogue about the character in the scene, I mean, you, at least <laughs> well, use something yeah. that's real and then you know, use something that's really important and they did. Um, my question, though, why didn't she try and save him? I thought the same thing. I'm like, this, this guy's a pussy. He's just like, kill me now. You you could probably survive cause, this. Because it goes from 1 to 100 in an instant. I was like, I, I mean, what? If there, was, if there was no way to get him into stasis or get him to a medical facility or whatever, and he was going to die within like 10 minutes or something and be suffering the whole time, I understand. But that was never explained. He had his eyeball gouged out. Sure, he had his... Borg prosthetic thing taken off as well, um, which could have been important because Seven of Nine has hers. So who knows how important that is to his survival? But still, I feel like getting him up into at least stasis until, you know, I'm sure the doctor from Voyager would have been able to save his save his life. Um, so yeah, I thought that was a little bit jarring and weird it, it that was, they decided that it was too short a scene. It it was. It was unfortunately a gimmick scene. It's a, we need this, we need to explain why she's different. Ooh, this makes sense. Boom, done, move on. Because, yeah, you, you do understand that he was a Borg. He was simulated from a much younger age, full, like fully converted with mechanical going throughout his body. Those are then removed and, and healed and new organs and stuff put in by the doctor. So he already had massive internal surgery to look human again. So this eye is a fake eye yes it get out they can put a new one in like that is not like that was already done w once in a sense you know what i mean like that is easily fixable so that's not a problem um he had a little like burn mark on his chest but i mean you only got the sense he was being pained from his eye being so and, and yes that was removed but again technologies have changed a bit in the last 30 years i i don't and obviously she got here with a ship. She got through all the security. She obviously had an escape plan, otherwise she wouldn't have come down here. So it felt very disingenuous to kill him. Um, at least try and get him out, or have him sacrifice himself, 
or or have them beam up so maybe she gets to them beams up to the ship we see him warp out we see an old ship that would have been a good excuse to see like a delta flyer variant whatever and then he dies in the operating table just before she gets a no she can't help short a medical officer like give us more of a scene or or flash back to that later um because it just felt i mean she murdered him without a reason really 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 a reason and that's what they were going for they were going for that she had to kill him she was the reason that he died, even though it was uh, Bejazel and her operate, like the person operating on him. Um, but they wanted to have that impact of her having to kill him to put him out of his misery, which to me didn't work. I mean, if 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 when she came in, she fired, and you know the other the doctor grabbed a blaster or something and actually shot Manu or not Manu, shot Hicheb, um, and so he was essentially going to die regardless. And then she did that. She, she still could have had that, but you needed something in there to, you know, justify it. Him getting his ocular implant removed didn't do it for me. Because you know um, how many surgeries he had to get lucky was mm -hmm. all of them. I mean, just just shoot him to stun, put him over your shoulder, and walk away. Then he's out of his misery until you get back to your ship and you can jet to him painkillers. It was forced. And remember, this isn't just a random person. This is a legacy character that everyone likes. Each of us a great character. I think it might have been implied that more was done to him, like more things were, more board game plants were taken out because of the mark on his shirt, which didn't look like any kind of incision point. It looked more like a blast point, like how he maybe got shot to get on the table. But I think I think they were hoping that we would think that there were more implants removed because we saw this one on his eyebrow gone. They took the ocular implant out. Um, but even if he it did, I mean, the likelihood is this is so many years later. I mean, I'm sure Seven would, would, would move on from getting back from Voyager and help deborgify technology. Like, she'd work with the Doctor to try and pine out tech. So if you ever find a cube, you can help people. You wouldn't just say, oh, well, we solved it all, and oh, each of us, oh, you can't... It, it, yeah, it, it was unfortunate. They killed a character because they wanted to. And that scene should have been a shorter start and longer end. And also the, and the actor they picked, who looked, I think, I said in another review, that, that didn't like Manu, particularly. Like, similar enough to be man of similar build, but, I mean, didn't look the same. But he did look a lot like the future Ichab from Shattered, which obviously was in, in when Chakotay uh, is able to walk around a multiple timeline Shattered Voyager, which I think is a really, really fun episode. And you see Naomi Wildman and Ichab all grown up. And, you know, because they were stuck in Delta Quadrant in that alternate timeline. Now, that actor and this actor looked incredibly similar. So there is a precedent for the Manu look goes into a different look. Fine. But to not get the actual actor who played him um, disrespects the character. It's like when in Doctor Who, they, you know, the Seventh Doctor refused to, to be in the death scene of him to be the Eighth Doctor or the Sixth or the Seventh. And it's just the Seventh with the wig. And you're like... I mean, that's a scene that's just like, wow, that's disrespectful. So. Yeah, I, I, I thought it was a little bit odd that they didn't cast Manu, but I mean, there there could be more reasons that we don't know about, but still, I, th I, I think that was very unfair to the actor and the character and the fans um, to kind of deprive them of that. But so is actually killing the character is sad and sad. For, you know what I mean? That is also not good for the fans. Um, he, he deserved better. You know, he, he deserved seeing the ship getting kidnapped you know he, he deserved an entire 20 minute flashback you know because the seven character was was i liked her in this episode for what she was but that could have been the entire three episode arc you know going after each Eb's killer like we would watch that or have that in the present day and and, and picard says you know help me find help me find daj or help me find soji and she's like look i will but you have to find each Eb first he's been captured by this lady where is he He's on free cloud. Oh, well, Manu's on free cloud. Okay, great. We'll go together. And then we see cut to Manu, be, you know, Manu, hopefully being cast, you know, be tortured like that would be much nicer. And then she's there too late and she kills the lady. That would have been a much better way of doing that. Yeah, um, I think, yeah, I think that instant revenge, like in this heat of the moment thing would have worked a lot better and made me feel better about the, what Seven did, essentially. Because um, she's had, I guess, years to, to work on this. So... And, you know, everything she, her character went through on Voyager to, you know, kind of learn about humanity and 
the, the best way to be human is to forgive and all this stuff. It just seems all kind of wasted in a way, um, but, and I mean, that's a little bit sad. That's the same me. with Picard and not becoming a father, not you know, retiring. I mean, they're wasting characters' potential by putting them in dark space. And yeah, 14 years, that's double Voyager's length. That's three times her length on Voyager, more than that. So three times the length on Voyager, she and all the things they did, and she could never find this lady and either kill her or bring her in. Really? Except, except for the wild coincidence and convergence of the Picard. Um, so I don't buy that. You know, it, it doesn't. That doesn't feel. That doesn't feel right now. I know. She, I said she's heavily armed. She's heavily armed, and they could point to that. But then, that she's not heavily armed. She hasn't got strong guards. Remember in the scene when uh, Rios, when the guns are pointed, there's two ladies with little handguns. And then the big guy, who is killable easily, um, because it imagine he's, Mandal- he's got the little Derringer gun that comes out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then like three guards run in with hand pistols. I mean, she's completely un unarmed. I mean, and also, there's a security measure where the people beam away, but the person who runs the bar doesn't beam away. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 it. This is another problem with the writing in the show. It's not particularly great writing. There might be great moments, but you can stumble into great moments or focus on little moments. So I think, yeah, the seven stuff. While it's fun to watch, it's very much Star Wars: Rise of Skywalker, Force Awakens. It's very much like, hey, look, events. Moving on. But yeah, Sally died. Gives a lot of motivation. Well shot. Sad that didn't come back. Uh, good, gruesome. Didn't make too much sense though. Uh, Damn, rest in peace. So, guys, this episode is going to also rest in peace because we are done, like, mm, well, each up. Like, each up. Um, yeah, so put your comments down below what you thought about his death scene, about not casting Manu specifically as well. Um, love to read your comments and thoughts about that. And as always, like the video, subscribe to the channel, you know, join the channel if you can. It's a great way to support us. It's much like Patreon. Um, so, you can do that as well and click the notification icon peace. because it's important and helps it us out. It is. Uh, and Patreon, I mean, that is a great way to monthly donations, make the world go round. Uh, you should be the fickle mistress, as we know. So a little bit of funds. You know, we do a lot of videos, and we don't expect to get paid for them, if that makes sense. We do them anyway, because we want people to know the details and the interviews and such. Uh, and if you can support and you enjoy what we do, then Patreon's a great way. Or a one-time donation at treadgirls.hotmail.com, or just like, subscribe, and all that jazz. And just watch our videos. You know, make them to be watched. So please do keep enjoying our, our Picard content. Mm-hmm. Until next time, guys, I'm Captain Foley. Now I'm Connor Holmes. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody.